Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I want to take an in-depth dive into the wonderful, wonderful tool, instrument, sample, and pattern creator and reason, Redrum. This thing is a classic for a reason, and today I really want to show you how to use it, both to create patterns, but really I want to dive deeper into these sections here. At first glance, it might appear that they're all the same, but they're actually some very different versions. If you notice, like, one and two have different features, tone to velocity, as opposed to this being start to velocity and rate to velocity. Um, and so what I want to do is dig into how you can use these different features and then also talk a little bit about how you can use Redrum to program drum beats and a few of the other features that are located in this. Before we go farther though, I do want to let you know I've got a free Reason cheat sheet. There's a link down below to download it. It'll get you up to speed on what every device does in Reason. So go check that out. And also, if you've got any questions about Redrum, I'd love it if you could leave them down below. I'll try to answer them or any other Reason device that you'd like me to dig into. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more great YouTube content on how to make great music in Reason. Let's cue the intro. All right, we're back. So we got Redrum here loaded up. And the first thing to notice is there are these 10 channels here, which are playing different samples, different recordings. Then you've got here where you can choose the patches and you've got the pattern programmer here, the step sequencer. Uh, you can also just play it as an instrument using your keyboard. I'm playing keys right now on my keyboard. Or you could go to the sequencer and you could actually draw in a beat. So there's many different ways to use it. Today, I just want to talk about how to use it in pattern mode. So to select whichever instrument you're programming, you would hit select. To hear what each instrument sounds like, you, hit, you can hit the play button. And then you have a bunch of tools to tweak those sounds. So first, I actually, let's talk about the pattern creation just so that we actually have a pattern that we can hear. Um, so we're just gonna do a real simple house EDM four on the floor beat. So you go down here and like I said, there's these 10 different instruments and this represents 16 bars or 16 beats, four bars, um, four measures. And this is the speed at which it plays back. You can also have it play fewer or more patterns. And if you want longer patterns, you can do it that way. You also have here the ability to control the loudness, the velocity of each hit, soft, medium, or hard, and whether or not you're going to be a flam, which is sort of like a uh, So let's start with just putting in, we've already put in four kick drums, and we put in two claps on the backbeat, which is standard. Now let's layer the claps with a, a snare drum. So I'm just going to select the snare drum and I'll have it, oops, have it select the same two beats. Now let's see, does that fatten it up a little? Yes, it does. And what about also layering this kick here? Cool. Now to add some more interest to it, why don't we make this first kick here, hit harder. So I select the hard dynamic. And now if you notice, we'll hear. And if we were to solo the kick. It would be a little bit louder, except that we don't have any selection here. So what I want to do is basically adjust the velocity to the tone meaning the louder or softer a instrument is, the, loud, the higher proportionally the tone will be, right? Think about it just like with a real drum. If you hit it softly, it's kind of low, but if you crack it, it gets louder and brighter. So now let's see what this does. Velocity is the amount that the difference in volume affects the tone, and the tone is how much tone is being affected.
you can also have the level of the instrument be affected by the velocity. So now we'll hear instead, you heard how the tone was kind of fluctuated. Now we'll hear the volume kick way harder on the harder dynamic. And let's just make it so it's more subtle. We'll do a little the velocity. And while the tone one was more subtle, overall, over the space of a song, little differences like this are going to make a big difference, as we'll hear. Um, on the claps, we'll also select the first clap and have it hit harder. And you notice the hard dynamics already selected. And instead of being tone being mapped to velocity, the start of the instrument is mapped to velocity here. So that means the sample, the harder or the softer the sample hits, the later the sample will start. And usually, especially on a drum sample, the loudest part is at the beginning. So if you make it start just a little bit later, it's not gonna be as punchy. So what I wanna do is have us at this harder hit. Well, right now, velocity is mapped to level. Let's turn that off. So now we're just gonna hear the sample start a little bit later. Or inversely. We've gone too far. So that's another way you can adjust the groove of your track. Now, let's say we like the sound of the clap, but maybe it's just a little too low in pitch. Let's turn the pitch up. Somewhere around there. And let's say we want these kick drum hits to be a little longer, where we can increase the length. Or we can have them be shorter. And this is the fade out tail here. Then let's say we're going to put in some hi hats. So we go to, let's try this guy. Typical EDM, but we'll do medium soft to create more of a groove. So every downbeat, I'm going to do medium, and every middle beat, I'm going to do soft. And now. And we already, we already have velocity being mapped to level. So you're seeing that the harder beats sound longer. Um, but I think maybe this is a little too high in pitch, so let's pull it down. And let's pan it. Maybe shorter? No, that's probably a good length. And let's layer it with this one. And I'll pan it the other direction. We'll make this one short. We'll bring them both down a little bit in level. Now for these ones here, you notice it's a very different uh, interface. And this can allow you to uh, affect the amount of bend. So like, um, pitch bend. So let's just solo this out and have it on the quarters. We are probably not going to use this, but I just want to show you how this feature would work. And the pitch is bending. And you can also 
have a velocity effect how it bends, although they're all the same velocity, or the rate at which it bends. So we've got a basic drum beat now, and if we wanted to like change one of the instruments, we can either just go to drum supply and start, you know, browsing, for example, for percussion. And we'll drop this, oops, no, drop this just directly on this muted channel. And now let's see what it sounds like. And with the, um, Bend. It doesn't actually sound that bad here. some flam here. So that's the basics of using Readroom and really getting the most out of it. You can also copy patterns, like copy this pattern, and if we want to paste it into this slot, for example, and then like, because you want the verse to be different from the chorus, then we have a whole new pattern too, and you also have multiple banks. So like in this part, you know, you could, let's turn flam off, but really busy drum, kick. And if you were playing this from the pattern browser, you could set it to the um, groove. So you can make fills like that and stuff. The next thing to show you is how this um, can be used with effects sends and things like that. So we can create a mix channel, which is basically just a standalone device. And we could call this kick, for example. And now if you look at Reason's mixer, there's actually like a whole mixer channel dedicated to kick, but nothing going into it at the moment. So let's go back to the uh, flip side of it, hitting tab. And what you can do is you can actually take the outputs of the kick drum directly and put it into this. And now it's going from here to a mixer channel as opposed to going to a total stereo mix here.
and if you're serious about mixing, this is usually the right way to do it because then you can pl apply much more complicated and detailed EQ and compression and things like that to any given track. Um, but we're not going to do it for every track. I just want to show you how it works. Separately, you could also use a mix channel, for example, to create an effect send. So like we'll put a reverb here. And since this is just like an old school sounding thing, sure, we'll do an RV7 digital reverb. And so you see there's send one and send two. They're both mono sends, meaning basically it's just left, not right information. So it's going out of here into this mix channel. And this mix channel is using the delay, the reverb as an insert. And so now we could send, we have to choose how much and what instrument we want to send to the uh, reverb. So we use just this S1 knob here, and now it's going to start sending the snare to the reverb. And we're just going to solo the snare. And so now, in the context of the mix. Or you can do distortion, comp compression, whatever you want. Um, a few other things to note when the drone prong programmer is like you can make the groove totally different so we could do it like in triplets. So that's another way of taking it to the next level. Finally, if you actually want to like insert this into multiple parts of your track, you notice here there's a, on the transport, there's like no information on it. So what you do is you go to this mixer here and click down in this pattern section, right click on it and say, copy pattern to track. And there you go. You've got all the individual notes from that pattern. And then if you wanted to, you could go in and actually like, draw in some random stuff. Well, I wouldn't recommend random stuff, but draw in whatever you wanted to draw in there. But the problem is that by default, it will still continue to play on here and from the sequencer. So you have to disable pattern selection. And so now this is no longer now it's no longer running here. It's purely coming from the sequencer. And you see, it doesn't affect it at all. So I hope you found this deep dive into the Redrum to be helpful. It's a really powerful and quick tool for not only sketching ideas, but really dialing in great sounding drum grooves. And I really recommend you take a look at it. Consider it for EDM, for hip hop, all sorts of things. Don't forget to download your free cheat sheet and be sure to let me know if there's any other devices you'd like me to do a deep dive on and how you like to use the Redrum. Thanks so much. Bye.